Hello everyone and welcome to the start of my coverage of Deep Rock Galactic, the board game based on the video game of the same name that I, I usually play once a week on my Twitch stream. I'm playing it tonight actually. Anyway, this is the very first mission from the campaign book, Mission 1, New Darkness, New Fortunes. Just using everything as is right out of the box. If you haven't seen the unboxing, I suggest you go see that just to see the components you get and how the quality of the miniatures and everything else like that. But I got the first mission set up as in the campaign book, which is just over here. The goal is simple. We have to collect five of these uh, teal, I guess, coloured crystals, which are more kite. And also the question mark tiles that you can see on the board in a few different places, like one there, one there, and a few other places. Three out of five of those are Apocablooms, and we need to find and pick those up. Our dwarves land in. They have to fight off the creatures that attack them on Hoxes 4. They have to do those objectives, get back to where they started, and get out alive. I think that's about the gist of it. Um, there is a bar along the bottom of the mat here that will tick up uh, when event cards are drawn. If it hits these glowing symbols, bad things happen. That's when you draw a swarm card and more enemies will generally spawn. Depending on the difficulty you're playing on, the cube that I didn't think had a purpose during the unboxing, it actually does. It starts on a different tile depending on what difficulty you're playing on. I'm playing on difficulty 3 of 5, so it's going to start there, but there's no additional rules because if you play on like difficulty 5, I think all enemies do plus 1 damage and things like that. Also, just as far as setup goes, this is something else I mentioned in the unboxing. You get a little bag, which I have right here in fact, and I, I mentioned I don't remember having to randomise anything, so I wasn't sure what this was for. When you know what mission you're doing, it tells you how many of each resource is to be on the, the mission. You have to place them randomly. So you put them in this bag, as I did, for the Morkite, for the Nighter, and for the Gold, and then you draw them one by one as you position them around the map. So it's not, never going to quite be the same. So just because of the way it's laid out, most of the Morkite I need, one, two, three, four, is all over in this little cluster here. But I'm still going to have to go down here to get the fifth. So it's a little awkward. But that's the, just the, the way RNG worked out. There's two spawn locations for enemies. There's three enemies on the map. We'll take a look at a dwarf's card before we get started just to explain how things work. And then we'll jump in and talk about how the game flows. So if you're playing solo, you can choose to play as just a single dwarf. And then you get the Bosco robot that follows you around who kind of gets free activations after your activations to do similar stuff to you. He has a rocket launcher and a gun. Um, but I'm going to try using all four dwarfs, so forgive me in advance if I forget any of their specific rules, which are to the bottom left of each of their cards. For instance, the scout gets to attack if he does a move action. They have five health each. They've got a primary weapon and a secondary weapon. I chose the secondary weapons myself. I chose to use the alternative starting weapon for the scout, just because it's the one I prefer in the video game. That's his actual starting weapon, but you have alternatives, so you just slot them in like that. It's nice and easy. You start with a rock and stone card, which I've drawn at random, and I, I wasn't 100% sure if you're supposed to randomise which grenade you start with, but I thought it'd be more fun to do that. So I've kept them flipped down because I have no idea what they are. So we'll just flip them over now. So the scout has a incendiary grenade, range 4, does that 3 hex damage, and we'll set things on fire. The engineer down here, we'll have to do the other side in a second, but his grenade, oh, he's got a satchel charge. Normally that's the gunner that has those, I think. The Rock and Stone card, which is just something you can use as a free action once per campaign mission. Hello Steve. So that's, oh, you uh, t uh, charm a nearby enemy. Okay, interesting. Nothing will stop us now. So that forces a movement action for free. Good to know. And then over the side of the table we've got the gunner and the driller. So the grenade that the gunner has is a cluster grenade. I never remember if that's one of his default ones or not. And his rock and stone card is called Rock Solid. It's one additional damage. And then the grenade for the driller. I'm sorry, yeah, I do mean the driller. Electrocution grenade. Neat. That also stuns enemies. And also their rock and stone card. If you don't rock and stone, you ain't coming home. It gives you a reroll on what is called a mining die. Because you do a lot of mining in this game. So that's it. We'll get started and go back and look at the board. I won't be showing off these boards as we play, but oh, the last thing to mention, when they do a primary weapon attack, you just subtract one of the ammo here like that. The secondary weapons they have have three ammo base unless they overclock, and you would just subtract one ammo from that as well.
So we're back to the, the main board, even though I'm using the neoprene mat, but either way, we'll just talk about what you can do during a turn and what happens during a turn, and then we'll just get started. You pick a dwarf to activate, they can do three things. It can be any combination of the three things they're capable of, moving, attacking, mining, trading with another adjacent dwarf. Um, you can upgrade your secondary weapon by flipping it over if you have one gold to spend on it, I think it was. And you can do any combination of that, uh, keeping in mind their special unique rules for each dwarf. You can use your rock and stone card for free if you want. When you end your turn, you draw an event card. The event card might do a bunch of stuff. It might tell you to move the swarm counter here. And if you pass or land on one of these, you draw a swarm card and resolve that. It might tell you to activate enemies. If it does, they will move or attack. They will never do both unless otherwise stayed. And the stats for the enemies, you can just about see the bottom of the board behind Molly at the top there. I've got it just positioned so I can read it clearly. All the enemies, they've got health stat, they've got a range stat and a move stat. And then some of them have some special rules like exploding when they die. But because this is the first mission, we shouldn't be seeing anything too terrible. Now uh, you can also choose to mine as an action, either a stalagmite that's adjacent to you or just a wall. You can dig through walls, like for instance, if you were here, you could absolutely just dig through the wall here to get into this section. Although some of the dwarves have a means by which to get over chasms as well. So I think that about covers everything. We'll see the swarm mechanic as we go. Um, if we get enough niter, which is the red one, we can call in a resupply, which we'll need once we start running out of ammo. And yeah, I think we're about to get started. So new darkness, new fortunes. Let's see how this goes. So to get the game underway, I'm going to activate the scout, and he is going to do a move as the first of his three actions. Dwarves move three spaces, so he's just going to go one, two, three. Now that's going to land him on this question mark which means we're allowed to move it out of the way and flip it over. If it's an Apocobloom, we just pick it up. It will be a loot bug if it's not, which means that you have to use a pickaxe action to shatter it. And it is actually one of the blooms we need. You would put that in Molly at the top of the board, but just for ease of how I've got the table set up, I'm just going to put it to one side where I can see how many I've collected. At that point, the light-footed rule comes into effect for the scout. One free range attack action or throw after movement. So we're going to use that assault rifle of his. I'm going to deplete one ammo, and we're going to roll two blue dice, because that's the ammo type it uses, which look like this. We'll see more dice colours as we go. And the way it works is you must assign a success in whatever you've rolled to the thing you were firing at. I should have declared, really, which is the, the one adjacent to him. Then if there's any other successes, you can choose to assign them to adjacent targets to the primary target. Uh, keeping in mind any resistances that might mean you have to hit the same thing twice. Also, there is a double symbol on this, but that's applied as one set of two hits. So you can't split that. But we only rolled one success, as it turns out. Grunt, which are these little guys, they have no defense, they have one health. So that took that grunt out. So then, I want to go this way. I'm going to send the scout down here and then back him up with the engineer is my plan. Have the other two go the other way. So, there are still two enemies to deal with. It's possible they'll activate when the scout ends, depending on what the first event card says. I think we're going to make use of his grapple hook, which is he can move freely over any pit or creature, because in the video game he has a grappling hook. We can essentially fly. So, I'm just going to go, and we're just going to go one, two, three. So, again, normally you wouldn't be able to walk over this hole here, but he can because of his grapple hook. And finally, I'm going to do a mining action as his last action to try and mine out ideally both. If you get two successes on the mining die, you can apply both to do different things that are adjacent to you. I want to mine this wall to get this red niter here, and I want to mine this to destroy it. So we're going to try and do that on the white mining die. Just realized I was a bit too zoomed in for where he's moved down, so you didn't even see me point at the niter. There's the niter, there's the slab mite. And we did actually get the two, so I'm going to do both. Uh, I'll need to look out a blank tile because that's going to get freed. You put that in Molly, but again, just because of the way I'm recording, I'm going to put it to one side where I can see it. And I'm going to double check if you get a free roll in the reward table for destroying that stalagmite. Yep, I was remembering correctly. So one of those pickaxes was used just to mine out this. Another one was used for what's called landscaping. We are destroying this and then we test to see if it had any rewards in it by rolling this mineral die, which is kind of like a orangey brown. And that is, I believe that's Niter. Let me just double check, I've got it over here. That is, so we actually have two Niter now, which will help us call in a resupply layer. So that is the end of his turn. He's done three things. He, he moved with a free attack included. He moved again, and then he did a pickaxe action. So we then have to draw an event card. So we'll pull back a little bit. 
the bank cards I'm gonna have to stretch and it is there's a pebble in my boot that's a line from the video game you take the time to empty your boot and find a lump of gold collect one gold and then increase the swarm threat by one so because of the difficulty I started on we're now one away from a swarm happening it's basically a horde it uh, happens in the video game very frequently but that's the scout's turn completely done so I think I'm going to go with the driller next. His special thing is he can just walk into walls to drill them because he has drill hands. But if you do that, you get one step of movement. You can't keep going and do three in one action. So he's going to move, first of all. and He moves three as well. One, two, three. I forgot to mention, but once every dwarf is off of the starting drop pod tiles, you flip it over because it goes away. Uh, normally, if you're in there, you wouldn't draw an event card and you can't be attacked. The driller is then going to use his flamethrower. So he's going to use one pip of primary ammo, I'm just subtracting that now of the five you start with and he gets to roll three fire dice grunts have no defense against fire and uh, we're not going to see any enemies I think on this one that are defensive against them some of the nastier grunt types are and we're just going to roll here so that is a whole bunch of fire tokens that was four in total and he is allowed to hit adjacent enemies so he'll apply the double to this one and then the rest to that one and that means all enemies on the board are currently dead, but there will be more. Most event cards will cause them to act. We got kind of lucky that that first one didn't. So that's two actions. His third action will be to move again. One, two, and he's going to drill into there, which will end his movement instantly. But he will destroy that wall there. So let me just grab another tile. He's going to drill his way into there like so. So now we're connected through to the room that we really need to get to, because that's where all the Morkite is. Now, his event card then. Let's see if this causes anything. Oh. Fast critters. If this didn't trigger a swarm... Oh, you have to increase the swarm by one. If it didn't trigger a swarm, all creatures move and attack. Well, it did increase... Uh, it did cause a swarm. Because I've got to increase by one, and that hits one of the... If we just pull back a little bit. That hits this logo here. So we have to draw and resolve... A swarm card, which will cause some more spawns to happen. So here is our spawn. Ooh. Grunts, grunts everywhere. Place two grunts at each tunnel exit. Activate all creatures. Okay, well that means I'm going to need to look out an extra grunt, actually, because there was only three to start with. But two of them are going to appear at exit two and exit one, and they are immediately going to activate. However, they will all move, because the basic grunt doesn't have a ranged attack. So all of a sudden there's a lot more enemies on the board. They activate grunts, move three. One, two, three. Going after the closest threat. They can walk over chasms because in the video game they kind of hang on walls and roofs and things like that. So one, two, three, I guess. Puts them the closest to any other threats. This one's going to be adjacent to the driller. And this one's going to come after him as well. I believe it's the closest threat that he can see. So that is all their movement. They don't get to attack. And we're over to the next dwarf. The next dwarf will be the gunner. Because I think we need guns. So, let's go one, two. And he's going to walk on to this question mark. And we're going to see what it is. It is another Apocabloom. So that is two out of the three we need. Then he's going to use his pickaxe. Because I need to get line of sight to help out the driller. Because otherwise he's in a spot of bother. We got one. That's good enough. He's going to shatter this, and that means we get to roll the reward die as well. That is gold. I'll put that to one side for a second. And that gives him a nice line of sight of two enemies. So we're going to subtract one ammo and use his powered minigun, which is three green dice. Which are your most basic type. And let's see, successive attacks are free actions, pay only the ammo. So if he gets this success and it still doesn't wipe him out, he can expend an ammo to try again. As long as he gets at least one. He rolled three hits, so he will assign them in such a way that both are dead. So he moved, he mined, he attacked. That is it for his turn. Event card. Incidentally, if it hits the end of the swarm track, I think we just lose. Oh, they're closing in. Increase swarm threat by one. If this didn't trigger a swarm, activate all creatures. It did not trigger a swarm, so unfortunately, we are activating all creatures. Which means this one's going to move because he can't reach. But the other one is actually going to hit the scout in the back. So they roll just one monster die. If they get the crit, it does nothing. If they get the teeth, it does one damage. If they get a blank, it does nothing. 
Well, there's the teeth. So that is one damage to the scout. He has four health remaining. So we've just got the engineer to go. I was going to put down the turret with him, but I think I need to help out the scout now to avoid him getting murdered. So he has to do a move, one, two, three, at which point this flips over and the drop pod leaves. That's one action. He will move again, one, two, three, to get over here. So he has line of sight. And he's going to fire his grenade launcher. That's his primary weapon. It has a kind of three hex radius, so one, two, three would be the area of effect we're aiming for here. He's going to roll one red die. Now this actually has an icon on it, I'm not sure what it means. Oh, it means the enemies get scared and move away. Let's hope we don't roll on that. It hit on a explosion. I believe that is good enough. They don't have any resistance to explosions. So this will just, this is an HE grenade instantly. It does have an alternative one called AP grenade. But that is one. Actually, I'm going to have to double check because I believe because that's AOE by default, it will kill both of them. Yep, it is one damage to every space. And I chose this, this, and this as the AOE because the alternative would be the scout getting caught. And there is friendly fire, just like in the video game. So you got to watch out for that. That was his third action though. So he is done for the turn. He expended one ammo. There we go. I forgot to remove that. And we out. Draw one event card, not two. Oh, what is this? Sticky Spitter. Increase swarm threat by one. Done. If this didn't trigger a swarm, it did not. Place a web spitter at the exit closest to a dwarf. The closest exit to a dwarf is exit number one. And it'll be closest to the driller. So now there's a lovely spitter right there. And unlike the normal grunts, they don't need to get close because they have range... Oh, what range do they have? Range five. So as long as they have clear line of sight, they're a problem that needs to be removed. But now we just do the whole thing again, we go back round, we can activate the dwarfs in any order as far as I'm aware. So it's up to us the order we choose, and there's no rounds or anything like that, it's just everybody has to get their turn. Alright, I double checked and the rulebook says you have to do order, uh, turn order in clockwise order from wherever it is you start. And if you're playing solo, obviously it's up to you to choose. I started with the scout, so I believe that means I have to carry on as I started. Which is a problem because I have range 5 on my gun. 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, I need range 7 to catch that spitter. So another dwarf might be about to get shot in the back by some webbing. We're going to activate the scout. He's going to move down here. And then he's going to do a mining action. He got 2 again. He's really lucky with that. So we're going to mine the Morkite. And that's the first of the 5 we need. The rest is in the other half of the cave. It's also going to bust open the wall there. And we'll just use the other one to destroy this to get it out of our way. Which means we get to roll, roll the reward dice. That reminds me, I forgot to give myself the gold for that. So that's another nighter on top of the gold I'd forgotten. And he's got one action left. He'll move again. And hope that this is the final Apocabloom. And it actually is. I swear to you, I did not know that. Which means the other two question marks are loot bugs. Which in the video game you can pet. But if you kill them, you get resources. But if you kill them, you're a monster. So, we need to draw an event card. Oop, again, drawing two at once. Starch nuts. Optional. If you're not incapacitated, draw two rock and stone cards and increase swarm threat by one. I don't want to increase the swarm threat by one. I still haven't used any of my rock and stone cards yet. So it says it's optional. I'm going to choose no. So next, I activate the driller. So we'll go with the driller again. He's expending one ammo with his range three flamethrower. I want to burn that spitter to death. Now, do uh, spitters have armor? They don't have any kind of armor, but they do have two health instead of one. So we're going to have to hope for a lot of burninating here. And we got two, and that's good enough because there's no resistances. So splatted the, spl uh, the spitter for his first action. His second action is going to be move. One, two, three. And then his third action is going to be a move just to walk into the wall with his drill hands to collect the second Morkite. So we'll pick that up, put a hex down, and he's technically ended his turn right there. We're going to need the gunner or the engineer to come over here to cross that chasm unless I want to very slowly go around it by digging in the wall, which is not ideal. The event card for the driller is... Mission specific event, follow the description specific to this mission. So this is a special card you can draw. I don't think there is a mission specific. Uh, let's see. Oh, there is. It's called Glyphid Grunt Nest. Place a grunt at each tunnel exit. So, tunnel exit. I guess it would spawn where it's least helpful to me. And 
exit. So there's one grunt at each of those. The trusty engineer is next, I think. I might be misremembering. I think the engineer activated before the gunner. He's going to expend one primary ammo and use one action to put down his sentry turret right here. If a monster is placed, moved, or does anything, activates within three squares of it, it will roll one bullet die against it as a reaction, kind of like an Overwatch type situation. Uh, and monsters will only target it if it's the closest threat and they can't see any dwarves. It has one health. If it gets destroyed, it just it can be replaced. The engineer can also just choose to replace it whenever he wants, but he has to pay the, the ammo cost. So that was one. And then, where is he most needed? He is most needed... Hmm, I was going to say to use the grenade launcher, but no, no, I think he's going to use the secondary weapon actually because he doesn't need to worry too much. Range three. One, two, three. Nope, not good enough. He will move one, two as a second action, and then he'll use his stubby Voltic SMGs, which is his secondary weapons. Two green die. It does a stun, but that hopefully won't matter because it's just a tiny grunt. It doesn't. The, the grunt is indeed splatted. And that's it for his turn, so we're right back to an event card. We're two away from another swarm. Not again! Place a grunt at exits 1 and 3. There is no exit 3 on this mission, but there is an exit 1, so literally that grunt he just killed? Just kidding, he's actually very much alive. The gunner is going to use one of his secondary ammo, which is the Bulldog Heavy Revolver. It's just a single blue die. I just want him to kill... it's range 5 as well. I just want him to kill that grunt, which he will, with one armor-piercing shot. Not that the grunts have armor, but had they had armor, that was armor-piercing. Then he's going to move. One, two, three. He's not going to get close enough to be able to use his zipline launcher this turn. Uh, but he'll move again. He'll just go... One, two, three, and get in position. He can launch grappling hook, uh, sorry, not grappling hook, zip lines over uh, empty spaces, but he's kind of wasting this turn, I guess. So, event card for him. Oops. Again, drawing two of them every time. They're closing in. Increase the swarm threat by one. Done. It's one away from a swarm card. And if this doesn't trigger a swarm, it doesn't. Activate all creatures. So, I believe the turret gets a chance to shoot because the monster has activated and it's activated within three squares of him. So hopefully that will stop the scout down here getting hit again. Well he rolled a blank so it doesn't matter. We will roll the attack for the monster, the grunt, and he hit the scout again. The scout has lost his second of five health. Could be better and that's it for the entire round. Everybody went so no matter what, when the next time the swarm goes up, we're getting another swarm card. The scout needs to get away from that spawn point too, because more stuff is going to appear there almost certainly. So let's get the scout out of dodge. One, two, three. I think he's allowed to end his turn on a gap again because of his grapple gun. If that's wrong, it's not going to make much of a difference because he's not going to use his full movement on his next move action. He is going to take advantage of being able to fire for free though after moving. And he's going to shoot with his primary weapon, and a, oops, so I moved the entire level by accident. And he is obliterating the grunt right here, and that's still just one action. So he's going to use the other one, one, two, three. And I think he's just going to kind of chill in that general area, because once we get all the things we're here to collect, we have to get back to the drop pod. It lands in the same place, unlike in the video game. So I guess he's he'll, he'll mine the... Stalagmite next to him. Although it might be good for cover. Uh, no, he'll attack it. <laughs> okay. He's busting it open. And he's getting... A nitre, which we already have enough of for a resupply, so it's not going to be super necessary, but... You do get health out of a supply pod if I do decide to call it. And it would help if I remembered the event card I was getting the other nighter out of the bag. So that's four nighter, one gold, two more kite in Molly, technically. The event card is Fast Critters, increase swarm by one, and it's going to be a swarm card. If this didn't trigger a swarm, it did. So we won't bother reading the rest of that. We'll draw a swarm card. We're coming up on halfway through our time. Praetorian, oh. Place a Praetorian at exit one facing the nearest target. Activate all creatures. Oh, that's not good. Alright, that's a nasty surprise to appear there facing the engineer. Every time the Praetorian moves, it always ends its turn facing the nearest dwarf. 
and that's because if you shoot it in its rear arc you ignore its resistances. It's got two resistance to green dice, one, red dice, uh, one resistance to blue dice, one resistance to mining, one resistance to fire, and I think it's immune to a status effect. I can't quite read here. I had to flip over the monster card just to find its stats. I don't think you're really supposed to be fighting one of these in mission one. It's got seven health, range one, move three. It was to activate, but thankfully it doesn't have any range, but it is going to move right into the engineer's face, which is horrifying. I think the engineer's just going to have to kind of grin and bear it, because I, I want to go with the driller, or I think I have to go with the driller, just because of the turn order I established. So, the gunner hasn't gone yet. If I'm wrong and you can change order, then by all means tell me, but it does say you go on clockwise, and I chose to start with the scout and then go to the driller. So I'm just going to do three actions that are all just moving one step, because if he's drilling when he does it, he has to do one step at a time. So, one action, two action, three action in order to get to the third of the five Morkite and busting some holes in the wall with his drill hands. So there's one, there's two, and there's, oops, very awkward. There is three. Bung that in, in, and there. So you can't quite get to that one. It does mean that if this card that we're about to draw says activate the monster, the Praetorian's going to attack the Engineer, and he has the potential to do 2 damage in 1 hit. They're closing in. Increase the Swarm Threat by 1. Okay. If this didn't trigger a Swarm, activate all creatures. Ugh. Well, the Praetorian activates, attacks the Engineer. He rolls a single die for his attack, but if he gets the crit result on it, it counts as 2 damage. 1 hit. So, one damage to the Engineer, he's got four health left, that's okay. So we're over to the Engineer now, incidentally it didn't activate the turret because it rolls a single die and it's shooting the Praetorian from the front so it can't get past this armour, it does no damage. So the Engineer, hmm, he is point blank, it does not have resistance to explosions, but he doesn't really want to use an explosion at point blank range, so he's going to move, first of all, we're going to go one, two, three, just to get distance safe. And I think that covers his rear arc. So this means if he did have a resistance, which he doesn't to explosives, it wouldn't be an issue. He's firing his grenade launcher, which is one explosive die. Oh, actually, no, maybe he should, no, he'll use the armor piercing grenade. I know that doesn't matter if he's shooting the rear arc, but we get to roll two red dice and pick the result we want. So better chance of consistent damage. We rolled a double hit. And a hit. I think the double hit just... Actually, you know what? Because this is a special explosive dice, I should double check if the double hit does anything, because I think that's the rarest result. Nothing special there, but double hit is just a double hit. No resistances, so that is two damage to the Praetorian, which you use the green cubes that come in the game for to mark monster health, or you can just use D6s if you have any. He's got one action left. Um... He will he will do the same again, which leaves him with one ammo for his grenade launcher. And we're doing the HE grenade again to be able to pick our results. Definitely picking the two damage again. I'm going to have to look out two more cubes. I'll do that in a second. It means the Praetorian has two health left. And we draw an event card. The event card, oh, it's got lots of words. Grabber attack. A grabber swoops in and tries to fly off with you. Dwarves within attack range of your space, each receive a free reaction attack against it, one hit needed if it survives. Okay, he, he dragged you away. Let's The scout can get a reaction. Let's use his jury raid boomstick then. It's range 2 and he's within range 2, so I presume that counts. It's two blue dice. Yeah, yeah okay, he did maximum damage, you're supposed to pick one. but Either way, so had he not picked it, or had he not picked it off, if it survives, the grabber drops you on an empty ground space furthest away from you following a straight path. Then you roll dice and see if it suffers damage and you fall over. So thankfully that doesn't happen. So it's the gunner's job to finish off the Praetorian, but he's shooting it from the front. We'll expend one ammo, we roll three green dice, and he is resistant to green, so one success gets subtracted from this roll. And that means that goes away, he does one damage, so it's still alive. He will take advantage of the free action he's allowed to do to keep firing. It still expends ammo, but he gets to do more. He just needs to do one more damage and it dies, because that's him up to five. 
Ah, oh, I got fully resisted. Does he have a, what does this rock and stone card do? Oh, deal one additional damage when attacking a creature. Okay, let's just ignore that roll and say I used his rock and stone card to do the one extra damage required. So that is used up for the game. Praetorian, dead. And that means that other bit of ammo wasn't expended. And he still just used one action. So his second action will be to deploy his zip lines. You can deploy one or more from a space adjacent to you. He's doing it like, well, I guess it would be like this. But he's doing that in order to bridge the gap. And that just means dwarfs can traverse it. And then for his final action, it'll be a move. One, two, three. So next turn, he can grab that Morakite. The driller can grab the other one. And that means we can escape. For now, though, event card. We're running out of time. Stuck. Your boot gets stuck between some hard, jagged rocks. Lose one health to yank your foot out or take your time to know we'll take the one damage. <laughs> One damage to the gunner. Don't have time. Time is the one thing we don't have. The cave is going to collapse. So because I'm sticking to this stringent time, uh, turn order, Scout has to go. Scout doesn't really have anything to do. So I'm going to just show off the resupply mechanic. It costs an action. It costs three nitre, which is the red crystals. We have four of them. So three of them are being expended. And you call down a drop pod next to you, or a supply pod, I should say. I'm going to put it here. Then you draw a supply card, and this tells you how much of each thing is in there. So there's seven primary ammo, two secondary, and three heals. So I'll just put that over there. I guess technically you should put them on the card. Uh, I should have enough here actually. So that's three, four, five, six, seven primary on the card. Because once you take what's there, it's gone. There is two health, and there is three. Sorry two secondary ammo and three health. He will interact with it to take two of those to heal to full. And he might as well fill up his primary ammo. So he'll take two of those. And there isn't really anything else for him to do. So he'll just move here to be ready to get on the drop pod as soon as it's there because it's up to the driller and the gunner to really finish this off. They're just kind of guarding the exit as it were. Um, so his event card is Unsettling rumblings. Increase swarm threat by one. If this didn't trigger a swarm, draw another event card. Oh dear. It didn't trigger a swarm. We're one away. Loot bug. Add a loot bug from the general supply to an empty space that's not adjacent to any dwarfs and then increase the swarm threat by one. I refuse to kill loot bugs, so I won't bother doing that. It does increase the swarm threat by one though, which means we draw a swarm card because it's maxed out again. Oh, it's going to blow. Place three guns at exit one and one exploder at exit two. Activate all creatures. Ew. Well, all of a sudden there's a lot of nasties. The enemies activate and the sentry can't see the exploder. They move three. One, two, three. He's going to explode next turn. And the grunts also move three. Uh, let's see, they're not activating within three. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. So that's bad because the driller is activating next. So those bugs could get a chance to hit and the exploder will do what its namesake says. He doesn't have the range to help so we're sticking with the plan. As far as the driller goes he is walking for his first activation right here to collect the second last morkite we need to grab. He will then activate again and go one, two, three, and one, two, three. That's all three actions. Can his rock and stone card help here? Nope, he's got reroll mining result. That's no good. Event card. A slasher emerges. Place a slasher on an empty ground space adjacent to you if possible. Dwarves within range of the slasher each receive a free reaction attack against it. If it survives, it attacks you. Well, that's a bit awkward that a slasher just emerged from the ground. The only dwarf that can do a reaction, presuming the driller isn't allowed, is the gunner. So absolutely cracking out that minigun against him. Because he needs to die. Slashers have two health, one resistance to this type. So here's hoping. Perfect. One gets resisted, two go through. You do not get to attack the driller this day. So the slasher goes. 
So this is the downside of not having painted any of the model shit because I just realised the turn I did as the quote unquote scout was actually the engineer. So the scout should be there because I used him as the scout. And I know it's not perfect because that wasn't where the engineer was but we'll just have to swap their places like that. I totally didn't notice. This is why you paint your miniatures. So the engineer is going and I'm going to immediately use his rock and stone card. Um, which is nothing will stop us now. Choose another dwarf to immediately carry out a movement action, including any benefits they would have. I'm going to move with the driller. One, two, three, up to here. This is just to start getting him to safety, basically. Then, the engineer has to go full kill mode. So he's, he is going to have to move back though. He's going to move away so that his grenade doesn't murder himself. He's using his last grenade. He is out of primary ammo. He is aiming for the, well, he can only hit two regardless. He'll aim for that one and do it in such a way that it catches the explorer as well, hoping to get them both. He got a run away and a double hit. How much health do explorers have? They have one hit as well. Well, I said he was targeting the grunt, so he has to kill the grunt. I'll need to double check if explorers are affected by the runaway result. Let's see, actually, I put the right page open. It's called Scare. Move any affected creatures up to two spaces away from the source of the effect, with the exception of a mole creatures. It deals no damage. A glyphid Exploder can use it to scare off adjacent creatures, but dwarves are not affected. Creatures resistant to explosive are still scared. So, he will get scared, and he will move away too. So, that's good, because that means he won't explode this turn, then. He's got one action left, but all he's got is two bits of ammo in his secondary weapon. Hmm... And no matter what he does, the best he can do is kill one thing. He will activate then, his final action. Do his Voltic SMGs, which is two greens. He'll shoot at the one after the scout. And he got him. But there's no target adjacent to apply that extra damage to, unfortunately. Well, just occurred to me, I could have used Hello Steve to tame one of those grunts as the scout with his Rock and Stone card. But too late now, the closest one just got eviscerated. Once again, almost forgot the event card. Apologies if I have actually forgotten any and just never done them. Unsettling rumblings. Draw another event card after increasing the swarm. because oh no, We're running out of time. Second event card is a Bugs, Bugs, Bugs. Increase the swarm threat by two, but no further than the next swarm. Okay, well, it hits the next swarm. So we'll be drawing a swarm card. We're also one, two, three, four, five away from losing. Slice and dice. Place one slasher exits two and two grunts each at exit one and three. Activate all creatures. Alright, those creatures are placed and they do activate. However, they can't go through other enemies. So, one, two, three. The slasher isn't going to get to do much. The grunts also have to move. Each of them has to move one space. And now all three of them are adjacent to the driller. And then we just go with the gunner. So we might as well, because all he is doing is moving. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then actually he could potentially shoot something. Uh, he could also use his shield. You know, he'll crack out the, the heavy revolver, one of his secondary ammo, against the grunt he's next to, and he eviscerates it with two armor-piercing shots. It's a little hard to get in there. Here we go. Safe, and a bank card. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot to get the Morkite. Let's undo that before I, I will still draw that event card. I'll put the Grunt back, because hang on, he was here. He would need to do a mining action, which he did. So he gets that, and then he would move as a second action. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Yep, the Grunt didn't die. So I'm going to give him his secondary ammo back, because I forgot he had to get the Morkite to actually make us win the mission. <laughs> But now, because of all the Morkite being collected, the drop pod is back, so we can flip that, and we can get out, we just have to not die. So now we draw that event card that was there, which was, oh no, don't get too close. Place an Exploder at exit 2, all other creatures activate. So not the one that's spawning, but there's already one on the table, so that's still bad. New Exploder on the table, everything else activates. So. The slasher is going to move and then stop adjacent to the turret because it's in its way. 
I don't think it would walk, well, actually maybe it would walk around because that gets it adjacent to a dwarf which it prioritises if it can. So never mind, which in turn blocks the Suicider, the Explorer, from going there. And then, unfortunately, uh, if, I believe if there's two equally adjacent targets, I get to pick who gets hit. Because this Grunt can attack the Driller or the Gunner. I'm going to choose that he hits the Gunner. I presume I'm allowed if I'm not. Apologies. Hopefully it won't matter. No, it does matter. So the Gunner's taken his second hit from that. And then two Grunts are attacking. One there, one there, another hard to see. They're both attacking the Driller because that's their only choice. They were one die each. I'm just rolling together. Two damage. So the Driller is down to three health remaining. We just need to get out. Alright, Operation Get to the Chopper. Have to go with the Scout. I'm going to use his primary ammo which he has topped up. And we're going to shoot the Grunt that's in the middle there because that's also blocking. Oh, he's very dead. So there's no adjacent target unfortunately to transfer that damage over to which would be nice. His second action is he's going to shoot again. He's got range 5 and he's going to shoot at the Grunt that you probably can't see because of the supply pod but it's right there. Back here. Just thin in the numbers. Murdered him. They've got no resistances. His final action is he is retreating into the drop pod which means he does not draw an event card and he cannot be attacked. If you're in the drop pod, you don't draw event cards. So that means he isn't going to accidentally cause someone else to get attacked, which is just as well. So we can just go straight on to the driller. He's next. He is just going to run for it. He is just running for it. One, two, three, one, two. He's on his space. I think they have to go on to their unique spaces. I might be wrong about that. No event card, because he is also in the drop pod waiting to go home. Then the engineer activates. He can make it out. One, two, three. He's also in, so no event card. And the gunner, finally, with the explosor, exploders and slashers. Yep, yeah, one and a half moves is good enough. The drop pod takes off. Oop, like that. Saving them and completing the mission. So with hopefully most things done correctly, that was a little look at how Deep Rock Galactic, the board game, plays. Uh, we were nearing the end of the track there. I need to double check if, if you hit here you you just lose or if it's a case of maybe you just draw a swarm card every turn which would probably also make you lose because they're kind of dangerous hopefully the flow was done correctly at the very least it wasn't too bad using four dwarfs i considered using one dwarf plus bosco but i wanted to see how it felt using each individual dwarf didn't really get the chance to use any of their fancy grenades uh, i kind of like the idea of randomizing those though because there is so many to choose from some that i don't even think exist in the, the video game but let me know what you think about the game and how much you'd like to see more. There's 12 missions uh, plus the ability to do random missions in the core campaign book that it comes with. Most of the other caves, like some of the cave setups are like this where every placement is known. Some of them though are flipped down and you don't know what's there until you break into the cave and have a look around and that's more in keeping with how the video game feels. I do hope to get the dwarves painted up because then I, probably not the monsters, the creatures, the hoxes, uh, but the dwarves at the very least, because they are so colour-coded, like the scout is always blue, the engineer is always red, the gunner is always green, the driller is always yellow, it would help definitely make them stand out more on camera as well to know who is where, and not do something silly like confuse two miniatures <laughs> for a turn. Luckily I spotted it. Luckily I spotted that. Anyway, do let me know what you thought, and I will hopefully see you in the, uh, see you in the future for more. If you'd like to support what we do here, please consider pressing the thanks button, or becoming a channel member, and that extra step helps support and keep this possible. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. It's time for now.